channel, it's your girl Jackie Ina. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe so we can see you coming back in future videos. I'm gonna be doing a video that I've seen floating around YouTube quite a bit. It is a high-end makeup versus drugstore makeup challenge or video, but I'm, I'm turning it into a challenge just so y'all know. This is about to be like, on and popping. One of my favorite YouTubers, who also happens to be a dear friend of mine, Laura Lee did the same video and she did one side using higher end products, makeup products, and then on the other side, she did a low end to create the same exact look. And when I tell you, girl, Laura, you were not lying. This was so challenging because it's one thing to compare ingredients or compare finishes, but I literally, to have to create the same exact look on both sides with two completely different products, it's very hard, but I think I did a pretty good job. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. I don't know, girl. Just as a little like fun little exercise, pause this video, go down in the comments and tell me which side do you honestly think, can you tell like which side is low end and which side is high end? My right facing the, the side where the flowers are or my left? Tell me which side. I mean, you're gonna find out in the video later. I want this to become a tag, like I think this is cute. High end versus drugstore. All throughout the video, I'm gonna be giving dupes for high end and low end products. And not only that, but I actually kinda of turned this into a challenge. So I'm like, okay, which one wins? Is it the concealer or the foundation? Is it the high end concealer? Is it the low end concealer? Which one wins? I'm gonna also be giving you guys tips on like, when is it okay to go drugstore for certain things? When should you spend a little bit more money and go high end? Tag me if you guys decide to do the video. I would love to see them. And without further ado, Let's get into the challenge. I'm ready to snatch some matches, man. We're gonna do this all the way from step one to finish, okay? And I got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get started. I'm gonna start by comparing two primers. One is from Sasha. This one is a mattifying primer. I have oily combination skin, so I always look for something that's like, got that silicone texture. And this one is from Smashbox, very popular primer, also very expensive. This one is the Photo Finish Foundation. So let's just do right side high end, lower end or inexpensive left side. The Sasha primer has a really good texture and like instantly, instantly mattifies the skin. The Smashbox one is nice, but it is Primers are not cheap. What I do like about the Smashbox one though is it isn't ashy. Now the next question is do you drugstore or high in your primers? I don't know, it's really kind of hard to say. I feel like I do have to spend a little bit more of my on my primers. I feel like that's my splurge item, so I always stick to higher end, but that's just my preference. Next up is to color correct. Now although these two are not the same exact shade, um, the LA Girl one's a little darker and the MAC one is a little more peachier. They both pretty much do the same thing. I just use a lighter hand whenever I'm using the LA Girl one because it is so rich in color. And can you believe it? This one costs you less than $3. I mean, come on, it's a no brainer. They're not the same in color, but they're still doing the exact same thing. expensive on this one simply because you get way more product out of this one. You get way more product out of the LA Girl because it's a huge tube. It's so rich in color that you only need a little bit at a time so it lasts you so much longer versus the MAC one. I mean it's black so you can't even see how much product is in there. You can never see when you're gonna run out. Like literally sometimes I'll be in the middle of my makeup going to apply my corrector and then it runs out and I'll be like girl like I still need you. I was rooting for you and that's really annoying. So I would say of the two inexpensive wins. Next, we're going to go with foundations. I'm going to be using Maybelline Matte Poreless on my left side, and then on my right side, I'm gonna use my Lancome Tint Idol foundation. Both of them are mattifying, both of them are full coverage, and both of them I would consider long-wearing foundations. I would say the only, well, one of the major downsides of inexpensive foundations are the shade ranges. They're extremely lacking in shades. They've gotten a lot better over the years, but there's just not a wide array of shades. The ingredients you're definitely going to have to sacrifice. Like you're going to notice they use, sorry, but cheaper ingredients, ingredients that aren't really the best for your skin. Like if you don't have super sensitive skin, you'll be fine, but you know, that's product that's being absorbed into your body. Some of those ingredients are not the best for your skin, so you really wanna be mindful of that. Also, I noticed that the drugstore foundations tend to run a little bit more red, 
Whereas department store stuff I'll buy, you can get more shade variety. So they'll have like neutrals and those warm shades and cool shades as well. Okay, so here goes Lancome. This one's actually, Tinted Dole's actually one of my favorite foundations of all time. It was so hard comparing these two foundations because although they are dupes and formulas, I'm putting both of them on my face and Maybelline is more red and this one's more golden. And I'm like, okay, I gotta find foundations that actually not only have the same finish but look the same or else that would just be weird. Got a good amount of coverage on this side from Tint Y Doll, but we also have a fabulous amount of coverage for Maybelline Matte Fit Me Poreless. So for foundations, do you go inexpensive or do you go high end? There are some amazing drugstore foundations that I do really, really like just as much as my high end. So I'm gonna have to tie this one up, drugstore and high end. Okay, so now it's time to conceal. I have two of my all-time favorites. This one is from Black Opal. It is their total coverage spot and scar eraser. And this one is from Tarte, the Maracuja Creases. Creaseless concealer, both of them are super heavy duty, very heavy coverage, so let go. Now that the two are blended side to side, oh, damn, side to side. They both offer about the same amount of coverage. The shades are a little slightly different. This one is a little bit more olive golden and this one is, I don't know what this is actually. This one is slightly more cool so it's a little pinkier. Um, Do you go inexpensive for concealers or high end? I think either or. I really think it ultimately will depend on the shades that you're looking for but you can find just as good formula. I mean, I think it's the same verdict with foundations. You're gonna get slightly different ingredients but the formula and the finishes are definitely similar and yeah, so I'm gonna tie this one up with both. So now it's time to set with an under eye finishing powder. Do you go inexpensive? Do you go high end? Listen, honey, okay, just save your frustration and spend a little bit more money. I don't know of any in the drugstore that are dark skin friendly. I've not found any, so this one's going to be my rain check. We're just gonna skip the swan and use my Sasha Buttercup because she always comes through. So on this side, I'm gonna use the new ColourPop brow pencils, which are swatching quite fabulous. And this is gonna be my first time using them. And on my right side, I'm gonna be using the MAC Spike brow pencil. Okay, so high end, wait, this one, or low end for brows. I honestly feel like I found inexpensive eyebrow pencils that have the same consistency, texture, and waxiness as higher end brow pencils. Maybelline has good brow pencils too. I just appreciate a inexpensive brow pencil just as much as I do a higher end. I'm gonna say you can go low end on the brows. You can do it, I believe in you. Let's go on over to the eyeshadow. Playboy. On the expensive side, I'm gonna be using my Urban Decay Vice Reloaded Palette. Is this one? Yeah, Vice Limited Reloaded Palette, which is bomb, but you know, it's not cheap. I'm gonna be comparing it to some ColourPop eyeshadows. Let's see how they go. For this eye, I'm using my Ruby Kisses Magic Eyeshadow Primer. And on this side, the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I'm gonna take 501, which is this dark blue color. Isn't she pretty? And I'm blending that on the outer corner. Blending, blending, blending. On this eye, I'm gonna use ColourPop Luckfully, which is a beautiful, beautiful rich blue. Then I'm gonna take UVB, which is this color right here, and pop that on my lid. Actually, I just went into all these purples. I used Freak Show, as fix, the, all of them, okay? These three here. Then on this side, to get the similar look, I'm gonna take two ColourPop shadows, but they're only six bucks each, so YOLO. This one is Lace, and this one is Dare. I'm gonna just layer them on top of each other. Then we're gonna take the dark blue and smudge it along the top and bottom lash line. Now 
I'm gonna take gold mine and use that as a tear duct color on this side. And on this side, this is also from ColourPop and it's called Telepathy. Inexpensive eyeshadows or high-end eyeshadows. Honestly, some of these lower-end eyeshadows bang. Milani has awesome eyeshadows too. I'm gonna give this one to the drugstore. One point for the low-end team. Woo, 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 woo. I'm gonna line my inner lash line on this eye with the L'Oreal Silk Kiss Me liner in, I think this is charcoal, no, this is black. And on this eye, I'm gonna use Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in Zero. They're both black. Girl, take your tush on over to the low end aisle because honestly, there's no eyeliner that I love as much as I do the Silk Kiss Me liners. I actually really like the Glide On pencils from Urban Decay, but Silk Kiss Me really does it for me. It's mascara time. Two Face Better Than Sex or L'Oreal Ms. Manga. This is gonna piss some people off. Actually, this might piss me off. Because Better Than Sex is my favorite mascara, but this manga is a favorite of mine as well. Better Than Sex is my all-time favorite mascara and while I do think that there's pretty much nothing on the market that compares to it, like at all, I do, I truly believe that you can get just as good mascaras from the drugstore and on the lower end scale as you do high end. I'm gonna say both. I'm gonna say both. There are a few mascaras that are so unique that it's like, yo, I have to buy that mascara to get that look. Everybody's lashes are different though, that's just my opinion. Do you, boo? I'm gonna set my foundation with two of my favorite loose setting powders. This one's from Black Opal, their deluxe finishing powder, and this one is from Black Up. Okay, now it's time to contour. So on this side, I'm gonna be using my Anastasia Contour Kit in the shade Tan to Deep. This is actually not new. Like, I don't know if she's come out with new ones since then, but I've never used it, so I'm like, why not? What the heck? I'm gonna take that shade there, which is honestly not very dark. It's got, It looks way lighter on camera, but let's see how it looks. On this side, I'm gonna take my contour kit from Black Radiance. This is the True Complexion Contour Palette, which is bomb. And I'm gonna take that shade there. Now, I love me some Anastasia, but Black Radiance killed it with this palette. Definitely go inexpensive if you need a good contour palette. I don't even really think you need a palette, to be honest, especially if you're not a professional makeup artist, it's not that deep. But what I do like about it is this one actually comes with a highlighter in it, so... It's not just like three shades of brown that you're not gonna use. For a singlet, I would recommend this one from Sasha. This is my all time favorite thing to contour with because it actually runs dark enough. It's not super red and it's just bomb. This is their matte blush in matte brown and it's like 13 bucks. And I have a coupon code. This was the hardest part was the blushes. I love me some tart blushes, I really do. This is one of their newest launches. This is their Tartist Clay Blush Palette, which is Quite beautiful as you can see and then I also have this one from elf this is their blush palette now I've been holding on to this one for a while and as I was comparing I came pretty close Tarte honestly makes some of my favorite blushes of all like hands down but I apparently have been sleeping on this elf blush palette that I just dusted off after having it for like three months Milani makes some of my favorite blushes too so I'm gonna say go low in for blushes. This one is good. L'Oreal True Match Illuminator versus Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold. So what I wanna know is who snuck into the Charlotte Tilbury factory and started putting L'Oreal labels on the stuff. They're the same thing. There are so many inexpensive highlighters right now. ColourPop makes some bomb $6 highlight. No, I think they're like $9, $8. I don't know. They're under $10. But you do not have to spend an arm and a leg to have a beautiful shine bright like a diamond. Just bronze glow, honey. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say low end for highlighter. I don't really have any lip pencils that are expensive. I, they just don't run dark enough that are flattering for me. That's just what I've observed. So for the lips, I'm gonna use ColourPop. This is in the shade 
Taurus. And then we'll talk about lipsticks. One of my favorite peach lipsticks is Charlotte Tilbury Hepper Honey, but it ain't cheap, honey. That's one thing it's not. I also happen to really love Maybelline lipsticks. I think they make some of the best mattes. This one is in the shade Stormy Sahara. They're both a peach tone. Hell yes, you can find some bomb inexpensive lipsticks. Like, I mean, really? The proof is in the pudding. I brought out the big stuff for this video. So for my gloss, I'm gonna use the Marc Jacobs Enamored Gloss and Sugar Sugar, which is super cute, very cute, and very expensive. And on this side, I'm gonna take my NYX Butter Gloss in Fortune Cookie, which is one of my favorite nudes. Mm, I think we have another no-brainer. Let's just round of applause for all NYX Butter Glosses because they're bomb. Here's the final look, low end versus high end. Which side do you guys think looks better? Do you guys think it's comparable or it's the exact same? In conclusion, I honestly do think that there are some cosmetic products that you really should not have to pay an arm and a leg to buy. Like they are just really trying it. And then there are some products like complexion things, foundations, concealers, and some powders that I do think are kind of worth the splurge. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I would love to know your thoughts on the challenge. If you had fun, did you enjoy it? Did you hate me? Am I ugly? Just talk to me. Leave me comments. Please subscribe on your way out if you have not already. I would love to see you back on the next video. And if you found this helpful, of course, give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Bye.